Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hey. I wasn't sure if I was going to get anybody popping in tonight. Uh, welcome, Mike, David, and Harry. Um, we didn't have class last night. I've been under the gun trying to get uh, some things done with a manual for one of our products. And uh, uh, time just keeps getting away from me. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to have class on time. Uh, last night, so I had to move it to tonight. Uh, so I want to thank you all for taking the time out to join me, and um, I really appreciate it. Um, tonight we're going to be uh, kind of almost like a back to basics in a way, but not really. We're going to be looking at basic signs, you know, different types of signs and designs and stuff that we can make. But we've all seen those really elegant uh, woodcarved signs with the really nice uh, flourish or floral type vine letters and things like that. And uh, generally that's a font that um, we you know, are able to obtain from online and, uh, uh, and, and stuff. Well, I want to walk you through uh, creating some decorative fonts. Uh, or letters or vectors, however you want to put it, uh, to to give your sign a little bit or your design a little bit of spice um, uh, without having those special type of fonts and things. So I want to kind of uh, take it a little bit uh, forward. Now we're getting a little bit of uh, lagging, so hang tight for a moment. Let me see why we're jumping here. Okay, sorry, we're getting a little bit of lagging there, guys and girls. Uh, we'll try to keep that to a minimum. All right, so let me see if I can uh, reduce the uh, stream feed so we don't have any more issues like that and everything so bear with me a second let me see what I can do All right. <clears throat> we'll try to keep that to a minimum. Uh, we'll see if that uh, cleans up any. I can tell uh, from my preview that uh, things are lagging a bit. And um, we'll have to get that uh, worked out. We're, we're getting a few... Um, Hmm. All right. We might have to go to a black screen for a minute uh, if uh, this doesn't uh, fix itself here. Are you guys and girls experiencing it as well too where I'm a little jumpy? Uh, let's get a sound off on that. Alright. 
All right. Um, All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, reboot the system uh, here in a second. Aloha, Tim. We're gonna reboot my system for a second. Now we're gonna, that means that the screen is gonna go black for a minute, um, but hopefully you're able to hear me uh, with those instructions. You're gonna, my screen's gonna go black for a minute, but I haven't gone anywhere. So uh, give me a moment while I, it says that my stream health is good but it's looking a little laggy on this side and some of you are saying that you're getting it as well so I'm going to uh, reboot my system and we're going to uh, experience a black screen for just a moment I'll chat with you guys in the chat room while it's rebooting and uh, we'll go from there All right, let's see if we are back. All right. So. There we go. All right, everybody, let's sorry about that uh, interference. We had a little bit of a Windows update trying to run while we were um while i was in the middle of streaming i uh, apologize for that delay hopefully y'all got to talk amongst yourselves and everything and uh we are uh back up and running okay let's go ahead and let's get into our uh program for this evening while everybody is here and ready to go All right. So as I was saying before we were interrupted by our Windows update is um, we've all seen the decorative fonts and stuff uh, with, you know, vine type uh, letters and, and things and then uh, different things and all. And that's usually a font uh, that uh, you can download. And whether it's a paid font or a freed font, the... Let's do a sound check, everybody. Testing one, two, three, sound check. Testing one, two, three. All right, everybody hear me? Everybody hear me okay? All right, William Edlin, I'm not sure what uh, is going on with your sound and everything, uh, but uh, we seem to be doing okay. Um, yep, testing one, two, three. Okay, so <coughs> let's, uh, let's get back to it. Uh, no more interruptions. Now, we, uh, as I said, uh, generally when you see, you know, these decorative fonts and things, uh, a lot of times it's the actual font itself. Um, and the uh, font sometimes is free, sometimes it's a paid download and stuff. Well, I want to go through and show you 
uh, some of the ways that we can create a decorative type text um, with uh, making our own design from scratch and stuff. So it's kind of a little bit of a back to basics, if you will. Uh, give you an idea. We'll look at a uh, another one here, and let's uh, preview uh, this one real quick and uh, kind of go from here. So here's another. Here's a simple welcome sign with a a floral uh, type uh, font for the letter W, and basically we're going to be using uh, a combination of bringing in vectors and using our trace tool. Uh, we're going to be using our trim tool to trim uh, different vectors to certain boundaries and things. Um, we're going to uh, look at maybe creating our own patterns and things using an array tool. And also uh, we'll be able to kind of uh, generalize and, um, you know, see if uh, what we can come up with. Let's see if we can kind of get a little bit of a fill color in here to give you a general idea. So we're going to come up with something, uh, you know, some different stuff and everything. And uh, just basically it's a basics, uh, you know, on how we would approach this, how we would work with our fonts and everything and our different vectors and things to, to uh, create these uh, different types of patterns such as the Robert sign that you saw, this welcome sign. But we're going to also do some other type of uh, letters and all. And I just want to give you a general idea on that. So a very simple uh, basic class. Let's have some fun. Let's see if we can uh, be a little bit creative and come up with some cool stuff. We're going to be doing this together. Um, I have not pre-prepared anything other than these two signs that you see here. Uh, the two patterns uh, that I prepared were the Robert sign, as you see on the screen here. And, of course, uh, the welcome sign that you saw. So... Uh, the rest of the stuff we're going to do from scratch uh, and um, see what we can come up with uh, together. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to add another layer here and turn off these other layers, give myself a blank screen. And generally, depending on what the sign is, and, and, and sometimes uh, we can have a really nice large initial um, with the a name or or company name or whatever the case may be kind of running through the center of it which we're going to do here in, in in just a little bit uh it could be something uh like that welcome sign it could be a house sign it could be whatever the case you may you know want to be but generally we would start out with a font and i like working with fonts that are quite wide uh in in the in the letters themselves uh but this can be used with any font that you wish and stuff now I'm using a Rockwell Extra Bold here uh, for the uh, general font, and uh, but again, uh, it could it could work well with any font. Not so well uh, when you're doing the fill of the font uh, with a particular design. Uh, not so well with the script fonts, you know, and, and things like that. But if we're adding a, a vine type design to that letter and everything to kind of give it a little bit of a flourish uh, then you know any font is really open for business you know when it comes to that um, and uh, and everything so let's get started here let's see here um, I'm going to uh, basically uh, let's go with a simple home sign right nothing nothing uh, extraordinary about that now uh, let's get this into the center of our material and I want to go ahead and let's get it sized up you know now I have a choice uh, I can run a pattern through all of the letters through just the main letter making it be the accent of everything um, it, it all really depends on uh, what you're going for and stuff. So let's 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 look at it both ways, and everything. And uh, I'm gonna do a kind of a repeated floral pattern throughout uh, all of the letters of the word home. And so let's go ahead and and then maybe we'll add a little bit of a flourish uh, above and below it and stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import my images. Now I haven't 
pre-prepared anything or traced anything any as far as images and stuff like that uh, I have a few uh, images and patterns and things to choose from and stuff and uh, we're gonna kind of just uh, play around with that and see what we can come up with and let's let's grab this one to begin with and uh, it looks like an interesting uh, pattern uh, throughout here so with this the first thing that I need to do is I'm gonna create a new layer I'm gonna turn off the word home and on that new layer I'm gonna go ahead and do my tracing and stuff and so uh, I'm gonna go into my trace bitmap tool here and let's turn the fading off now you'll notice there was some blinking uh, in the background uh, there's another pattern back there hiding that's my swirl pattern we'll get rid of that and let's get this centered back up here let's go back in there and uh, let's turn our fading off and first thing I'm gonna do is uh, come in and kind of get the best representation of my fill that I can and uh, we'll preview that uh, click apply and close that tool now uh, this particular design has a bit of a pattern at the bottom that I don't want any longer um, so we're gonna get rid of that right now we're gonna ungroup that ungroup key is uh, the fifth object on the edit object tools and let's go ahead and delete this stuff now I'm not so concerned uh, with this uh, open box and everything down here what I'm more concerned is is with the design itself because I'm gonna be uh, uh, creating an array uh, of this uh, particular pattern here and so what I mean by an array is um, I'm either going to be it, it's a seamless pattern so I'm either going to uh, run this pattern across my board so if I take this pattern here and what I mean by a uh, seamless pattern is from one edge to the next there is um, you know there's a it's 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 a continuous flow so I'm gonna use my array tool my array copy tool here and I want uh, one row and I'm gonna go one two three let's go one two three across on the columns and uh, my spacing I'm basically going to have um, a gap I'm gonna use a gap here and my gap is going to be zero on each of the uh, parts here and when I create this that'll create this kind of seamless pattern now they're where those two patterns emerge or they come together we have a little joint here and we'll go ahead and clean that up in uh, a jiffy so <clears throat> now when uh, creating this pattern this floral pattern across uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the first seam and we can see the seam here uh, by this vertical line where the two parts have come together and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gently going to take my second oh let's let's do it this way let's go back into our array tool and let's go with a gap I'm wondering if I go with a gap of negative point oh one That's what I thought. The negative is going to take me in the wrong direction, so I don't want to do that. Um, let's go with a zero gap here, and let's see if we can just create that copy. And what I'm going to do is group this together first so that way I don't have to keep picking keep picking and choosing you know all the individual vectors and everything so now I have I should have three individual groups and I can go ahead and come in here and all I'm gonna do is I'm slightly gonna bump this group over ever so slightly just to get uh, a little bit of an overlap on my joints and things and stuff 
And the same thing here, I'm gonna take this guy and I'm actually gonna bump him over, not once, but twice. Uh, get a little bit of an overlap. Let's back him up just a little bit. Get a little bit of an overlap there. And what that will allow me to do is when I come in here and I ungroup these vectors, I can go in with my trim tool and I can clean up the vectors that I don't need. Uh, and basically, it's just basically cleaning up the line or joint um, on these parts and things. So we're just gonna get rid of the line here. So I'm working my way down. All right, let's undo that. We got a little bit of a joint issue here. It's not wanting to really overlap. There we go. We can go ahead and work with me. There we go. If you have any issue with your lines and overlaps and everything not trimming properly, we may have to go into node editing depending on, you know, the vector or itself and things like that. Uh, but what we don't want to happen is what you just saw there. When we trim, we don't want to lose our vectors and all. So we may have to come in and go into node editing, and we may have to do a bit of o node editing and stuff to um, clean up these vectors. And basically, I just go through and delete the spans, and then I can come in and bring these two guys together here uh, and reconnect them. So if we have any issues like that, we just go in and handle them as they come. So let's get out of node editing and let's go back to cleaning up. And here, I should be able to take my scissor tool and if we have any issues and things with uh, you know our lines and stuff not trimming then leave them be uh, you know if they're not in the way and those down there at the bottom are not in the way because they're gonna be gone in just a moment anyway but what we need to do we do need to connect and basically remove these overlaps all right a couple of more All, all I'm doing is just working my way up that seam. And we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this down. Kind of bring it in line a little bit. And over. And then I'll clean that. This pattern is, uh, you know, even though it's a seamless pattern, it doesn't need to be exactly the same. It could be random all the way through. Uh, so now I have, you know, here I have no seams and stuff. So we got one more to do. So I'm going to start up here at the top. And uh, let me take this guy here and bring him down just a tad. And trim that up. Now we won't trim because this one's grouped. So let me ungroup him. There we go. And now we can clean up our lines. And just nicely work away along our seams. Once this vector is completed, I can export it out. Uh, and I never have to do this again. Um, I can export it out as a DXF. Uh, I'll be able to work with it again in the uh, future. And never have to do this again. So it's a one-time thing. And just be mindful of that. You know, it's a one-time thing. And if I really wanted to spend some extra time, I could go into node editing here and on these vectors, I could, you know, delete points and get things smoothed out. I could come up here and, you know, delete. Um, let me zoom in on that one. Delete points to get, you know, things smoothed out if I wanted to spend that kind of time on it, but it's a floral pattern. Half of this stuff is going to be gone anyway, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time 
on it. Uh, once it gets trimmed to the letters and everything, all of that is going to pretty much become irrelevant. It's going to become part of the pattern. So, all right, a couple of more snips and we'll be on our way. And all I'm doing is running down this seam and getting rid of the overlaps that I created. A little bit of a delay there. All right. And then we can go ahead and delete that. And that guy there. Now, on this here, uh, basically, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm just going to delete uh, the span. I'll do the same thing here. I'll delete the span over here. On this, I will come in and delete the span. And really, I'm not too concerned with that uh, down there at the bottom. That's not gonna be even play a role in my letters. So I wanna make sure that during all of that trimming that I did not have, do not have any <coughs> open vectors um, within my design. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna right click and hit selection and select all open vectors. And I have some open vectors as you can see here. And if you'll notice, this is the this open vector basically travels pretty much around the entire pattern from one end to the other, except for this guy right here. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my join open vectors tool. I'm going to do this now before I do any trimming and stuff. And notice I've got four open vectors selected, but it'll allow me to close them by clicking join. And now they are closed. So if I right click again and select all open vectors, I have no open vectors in the design. So now that I have uh, the pattern uh, chosen, I can now come in and turn on my text layer uh, here in the back end. And the one thing that I want to do is on the word home, on the word home here, this is going to be my final size and everything. So uh, I want to basically offset this inward a small amount, uh, maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe you know just a few thousandths of an inch, a thirty second or something. Um, I want to offset this inward because when I offset it back outward, it'll create a spacing in between my pattern and the profile of the letters and everything. So if I come in here and offset inward and let's go a small amount, uh, point zero three one two five, we'll go a 30 second. I want sharp corners. I want sharp corners and everything. And I want to delete the original. I want to delete the original um, and I want to click offset. And now I have a vector to trim to that's going to be my boundary i want to group that together group that together and my pattern my pattern let's turn off the word home let's uncheck it all down your shift key when you're selecting more than one item the pattern i want to group together as well i want two groups basically um <coughs> my letters, uh, my font or whatever being one group and then uh, my uh, design being the other. And now I can come in and I want the word home being the boundary. So I want to make sure it is selected last. So I've got my pattern selected first. I want to hold down my shift key and select my pattern home last. And I want to use my trim tool. With my trim tool, I want that second or that last item I selected, the word home, that is my boundary. And I either want to clear inside of the boundary or I want to clear outside of the boundary. And in my case, I want to clear outside of the boundary. I want to go ahead and clear that. So that pattern is now within my word home. Now, when it trims this, it actually closes the vector. It, it clears everything on the outside of the boundary, which is the word home. 
and it closes off those vectors, creating no open vectors and things. But you notice it's right on the line. And that's why I did my offset. So now I can come in and with my word home here, I can go back and I can offset it back outward that 0.03125. Uh, again, creating square corners and deleting the original. And when I do that, that now gives me my spacing between my letters and my pattern and things. And depending on how much spacing you want, how much bare wood you want between the pattern itself and the outline of the letters, um, you know, you would choose that. So now I have this kind of uh, almost flourish type home font. Uh, and things and so let's take a look now. We're going to do this a couple of ways I'm going to do a V carve just as it is right now and see what it looks like uh, I might not like it, but we're going to choose it uh, We're going to do it a couple of ways and uh, I may want to offset my boundaries out a little bit further uh, Depending on what look I want to do I might want to do just a simple V carve of the outline of the letter and then do a V carve of the pattern I might want to do kind of a raised thing. I might want to put a boundary around this of some sort to create another style raised effect because you know whatever vectors you have selected, a V-carve toolpath will cut between every set of two lines and all. So let's take a look at just plain Jane, whatever we just did and whatever we just created here. Let's go ahead and select it. Let's V-carve it. Let's see what we come up with. It's all about experimentation and uh, you know being imaginative and inventive and things like that. So let's take a look and see what we've created here. So I'm going to uh, not do a flat depth. Uh, generally, I would do a flat depth because some of the wide spaces and things in here. But let's see if I get a warning in my software. Let's see if I get a warning saying that I'm going to cut through my design, you know, th cut through my three quarter inch board and stuff. Uh, with no offset, and let's see if uh, we calculate this out. And so we have no warning, no no warning. That means it's going to be a you know a fairly uh, deep carving and stuff. But let's take a look at what we've created here. Uh, who knows? I don't even know. We just did it together. So let's create a visible. Uh, let's preview the visible toolpath, and let's see if we even created anything that looks good or not. You never know. It might not look good. Uh, but we're we could also change up the pattern and stuff um, What I will do is I will turn down my quality here in just a moment um, So it'll be much faster I wonder if it'll let me do it in mid run Let's uh Let's turn down that simulation quality. I think I have it up to it's almost maximum. Yeah, Let's turn that uh, down uh, down a little bit. All right, one more time. Let's go ahead and uh, preview that uh, carve. Let's get it selected and preview the visible toolpath. Uh, that should zip along much faster. Sorry about that. And so imagine if we add a little bit of color to this and everything, uh, you know, we end up with uh, not a bad looking little creative looking little home sign there we could add a border around it do something nice and decorative with the border and all uh, but uh, yeah there we go all right so this is option number one here uh, let's look at option number two which is doing a little bit wider offset on the letters uh, carving the inside of the design down and then doing an outline of the letters with a profile cut let's see what we can come up with uh, with that but all in all not a bad looking uh, cut let's turn off the color here get rid of the color and everything and let's look at that uh, that carving you know that we created so all in all not bad pretty cool all right all right let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, let's do it a different way here let's take our word home uh, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect the letters here of the word home I'm gonna go ahead and group my pattern together leave that group together now on the word home I'm gonna also group it together as well all right two separate groups on the outline of the word home let's go ahead and let's give that a bit more of an offset let's go about a sixteenth of an inch 
I don't want to lose too much of my letters by going too much. I might need to just go another 32nd, but let's go a 16th of an inch, again, deleting the original with sharp corners, and let's create an offset there. So now we have a little bit of a wider spacing, you know, between here and things, between our letters and stuff. Now we're gonna do this one a little bit different. Uh, this one we're going to uh, do a profile cut of the word home. We're gonna do a profile cut, very shallow profile cut, and then we're gonna do a V-carve just of the pattern. Let's see how that looks. So uh, this will be option number two of this design. So we're gonna have, let's do our, let's do our profile cut here. And uh, with the profile cut, I'm only gonna cut down a 16th of an inch deep. Uh, I'll use a 60 degree V-bit here. And uh, I want to be on the line. And let's calculate that out. Let's reset that preview and let's look at uh, what we've gotten so far. So, okay, of course, you know, we've gotten what we expected here. The word home, you know, V carved in there, right? The outline. Now let's go back in and let's grab our pattern here. And let's V carve that as well. And I'm not going to do any flat depth uh, with this. Let's go ahead and just calculate this out. And let's look at this one. Okay. So, got a bit of a pattern this way as well. Let's add a little bit of color to this. Let's see if we were to add some color to this, what this uh, design would look like. So now we have a little bit of a bolder uh, instead of everything in the white here uh, being that was carved away earlier, uh, now we just have basically the, uh, you know, in between the lines uh, carved out. And we've created a bit of an offset. Um, we've created a bit of an offset so that um, our profile cut uh, it could be a little bit, uh, you know, just a simple profile cut. Now I want to take that profile cut and I'm actually going to make it go a little bit deeper. Let's see what would happen if we give our profile cut a little bit more depth. This is going to make those lines a little thicker and everything. Um, let's go. Oh, let's see here. Let's go um, 0.125. And it might be too much, but hey, let's see. It's all about experimentation. Okay. So now we have a bit of a wider cut here. So uh, now the word, now the word home really kind of stands out. Uh, eighth of an inch, probably a little bit too deep. You see how my E is kind of bleeding into itself and everything over here. If I slide this over and zoom in, you know, uh, probably that eighth of an inch a little bit too deep. I'd most likely uh, back that off some. Uh, and let's see here. What would be a good, let's go point, oops, 085. Let's calculate that out. It is a V-bit on the profile cut, Todd. 60 degree V bit on the profile cut dot. It is a V bit. There we go. Uh, all of this is being done with a V bit, the entire design. Uh, all the designs tonight are going to be done with a V bit, V carving and stuff. Uh, very little profile work or, or, or in mill work or anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's look at that again. Okay, so with a 0.085, um, pretty good. Now, if I wanted to clean up that, you know, these letters and all, or stretch them, or make the sign bigger and everything, there's a lot of things that I could do. Now, what if I just wanted my letters to be, um, what if I wanted just my, my letters to be, you know, plainly carved, but I wanted a border, um, wanted a border around this and then I wanted this floral pattern to fill inside of that border. 
uh, not necessarily want the font. So let's look at a third option for this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go undo, undo, undo. And I'm going to bring us back to here. And what I'd like to do so I don't have to keep undoing things is I'm going to take uh, this pattern right here and I'm going to make a copy of it to a new layer. And I'm going to just call this my pattern one layer. There we go. All right. So let's take this a step further. Let's go and let's create a border. So I'm going to create a rectangle uh, around the outside of my design. Let's go ahead and turn off uh, my pattern layer for a second. I don't need that on. And let's get this pattern centered up on our material. There you go. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. And let's make sure the word home is also centered which it should be. All right, on my border here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to um, bring that, I'm gonna bring that, uh, offset that inward. I'm gonna go one inch, one inch offset. No, too much. Let's go three quarter. Or I'm gonna go, let's go five eighths offset. There we go. And on that rectangle, uh, let's do a little bit of a decorative corner here. Let's go with an internal radius and I'm just gonna go with a small half inch internal radius there. All right, so now I've got this border here uh, that has an internal radius corner, you can see there. And I want this border and home to be grouped together. I want it to be grouped together. And then my pattern is gonna be the second group once again, remember now. And um, what I wanna do is I want to, uh, if I select this home and boundary uh, group second or last, again, I can come in with my trim tool and I wanna clear outside of that boundary and notice what it does is it clears not only outside of the boundary, but also inside of the letters and things and all in all. Now, I'm going to, uh, I don't want my boundary of my letters and the boundary of my border next to uh, the trimming of, you know, those, those pattern, that pattern and all. So I'm gonna undo that. And I wanna take my boundary and I'm going to ungroup that from home for the moment. I'm going to take that boundary and I'm going to offset it inward a small amount. I'm going to go a 32nd. Uh, actually, I'm going to go a 16th. 0.625. I'm going to offset it inward and delete the original. Okay, so we have that offset inward. The same thing with the word home. Same thing with the word home, except for this time I'm going to offset outward. I'm going to offset outward, creating sharp corners and everything. That way it's larger. And once again, I'm going to group the word home with my border. And I've got my pattern here. Let's choose my pattern first, my border last, my boundary last. And go into our trim tool and clear outside of that boundary. So we've got this here. Okay. Now I'm going to select my boundary. And once again, I'm going to ungroup it. I, I, for some reason, I do them separate, but uh, let's turn the boundary off first and let's take our word home here and let's offset it back inward that 16th of an inch. Oops. I want to delete the original. There we go. Uh, back inward. That creates this little uh, gap, this little void here, which I want. And then the same thing with the uh, border here, but now I'm going back outward with the border. Okay, creates that little void or gap in things. All right, so now I'm going to have a, you know, a completely uh, different looking sign. I'm going to have basically this pattern, uh, you know, carved in with the letters uncarved. Now, 
what happens if we take all of our vectors and select them as we do here? Uh, if we take all of our vectors and select them and we create a V-carve toolpath, well, if I create a V-carve toolpath, if I don't have a flat depth and everything, most likely I'm going to get this warning. And this warning is letting me that is, know that it's going to cut through my material. So on something like this, I'm definitely going to require a flat depth. So in my case, I'm going to use an eighth inch flat depth. Okay. Now, when I use a flat depth and all, I do want to use a flat area clearance tool. So I would use an end mill Todd in this case for the flat areas only. Um, and so I'm going to select that and we'll go with our eighth inch end mill and calculate this out. Now, I might not like this pattern. Um, and notice that I've got some blue around this outside of the border here. Did not want that. Did not want that at all. What that is, is I forgot to delete my original rectangular boundary here when I offset it inward uh, earlier. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I deselect that boundary and recalculate this. Okay. So now you can tell here, looking at this, uh, the word home and stuff, uh, I got some crazy stuff going on here. And most likely, the way that the uh, V carving looks and everything in the lines, my letters are going to get a little bit beat into and stuff. And so that may make me want to offset those letters inward a little more. But let's take a look and let's see what we've got here. So let's preview this toolpath. So if I zoom in, my letters aren't beat up too bad. There's, there's not a whole lot of distortion or anything in there. So my 16th of an inch offset was suitable, uh, was suitable for um, the design and everything. And um, so now we have a completely, you know, a, a completely different looking uh, sign. Now we have a home sign with this uh, floral pattern and things in the background. You know, just give it just give it a little bit of a, a, an added element and stuff and all. So, you know, uh, depending on, you know, how we would want, you know, to do it and everything. So uh, the whole point of this is, is by creating patterns and I like using seamless patterns uh, when 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 creating these things. And uh, I have a, you know, a collection of seamless patterns and stuff. And that, that way they can if I need to create this seamless pattern across the board, and stuff I can rather than taking one pattern and stretching it stretching it you know across the board then it kind of distorts it and it doesn't look the way I really want it to look and stuff um, if I can seam that pattern across then I'm gonna get a nice continuous flow all right so there's pattern one uh, two ways basically um, where we have the design and pattern around the letters or we have the pattern within the letters. All right, let's go ahead and let's create a new layer here. And let's turn off this uh, pattern here. And let's go in and see what we can do with a, another type of look and sign and everything. So with this, uh, let's say that uh, it's a family name. Oh, Ronald uh, asked the question how long it would take to carve this particular design uh, based on my bits, feeds, and speeds, and uh, machines rapid rates and everything. Uh, you're looking at about 45 minutes. So um, four minutes for the pocket cut with the eighth inch end mill and about 41 minutes uh, with the v-bit and everything so about 45 minutes to carve that particular design and again uh, if we didn't get started in the beginning let's go back and let's look at our job size here my job size for this particular project is uh, 16 a little over 16 and 5 eighths uh, by a little over five and a half inches okay 
All right. So now, which is not a bad time. All right, great question, Ronald. All right, let's go back and let's uh, turn that off. And let's come in here and let's say that we were doing something. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a couple of family names, uh, a lot of different styles and stuff. We're gonna change the board size up here in just a minute and stuff. But let's say we're working with this long, narrow type uh, board design. You know, a sign that's gonna hang on a wall or in the front of a house or on a mailbox or whatever it may be, and, and everything. So let's say that. Um, We've got, oh, what's a good last name? Let's go with mm -hmm. All right. Go with a bit of a proper name here. Now in this one, um, I want my board to be a little bit longer. So let's go in and change this size up a little bit. I'm gonna go with a uh, 17 and a half in length. And let's go with a six inch wide. Click okay. All right, now on this one, I want to change it up a bit. Uh, I want to take and uh, I'm going to, I've got, you know, again, fonts can vary depending on this. I'm just working with one font, but that doesn't mean you have to work with this font every time. I'm just illustrating with this particular font. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a good one to work with. And this is the Rockwell Extra Bold <coughs> font, but any font will do. Um, but what I want to do is this one now, I want to convert this text to a vector object, uh, basically breaking up each of these vectors here and everything because I want to focus on my C. Uh, on my C, I want to go ahead and enlarge uh, my C. This is going to be the, uh, you know, letter of the first, or the first letter of the last name. In chambers here, Hambers without the C. And actually, let me go, uh, I need a little bit longer sign. A little bit longer board. Let's go add another inch to it. Could have picked a shorter last name, but that's all right. Okay, so on this here, I wanna move this over a bit and I do want to kind of stretch it slightly. Not much, just some. And I want to bring this up. I want to center this with my C. I want to let's stretch my C out a bit, holding my shift key down and let's kind of bring it up a little as well. Um, I want to make sure that chambers or hambers, uh, let's group that together, is centered to the C. So I'm going to select that C last, and I'm going to use my Align to Selection tool uh, to make sure that's somewhat centered there. And I'm going to do a couple of things with this. Uh, I want to um, add a little bit of a decorative flourish underneath, uh, as well as within uh, the letter here. But also, we can do kind of a block style letter. If any of you uh, Vetric guys and girls have ever done uh, any of your tutorial videos and stuff, then you know uh, the Bull's Head tutorial, one of the getting started videos. Uh, the letter B in Bull's Head had a nice little box with a little flourish around it, sort of like uh, my design, um, which was here with the Roberts, you know, this kind of uh, bordered design here and everything. So, what I'd like to do with this one though is I'd like to add a little bit of a flourish within the letter C uh, and then leave chambers as it is, uh, but put some flourish underneath, maybe up top, or I might even raise chambers up a little bit off center here and put a floral design here. But let's find out. Let's go in into our images and let's see what I've got to work with um, and all. 
So let's see here. get rid of that and let's uh, once again create a new layer uh, I am NOT naming my layers right now uh, this is just layer 7 um, but uh, we'll go back and name them appropriately and everything in a moment alright so first things first I'm gonna go into my trace bitmap tool here turn off my fading and slide this forward a bit not the highest quality image uh, very poor quality if I do say so myself, but it will suit my needs. It will fit my needs for now. Um, so now I've got some vectors here and all I need to do now is choose a pattern. Uh, what pattern would I like to have with my flourish, you know, to kind of, this pattern is going to go under the letters and things and we'll smooth it out and clean it up here in just a moment I think I will go with this guy right here let's ungroup that and let's uh, take him and group him together and move him over or down should I say uh, but let's uh, let's grab a different one here as well We'll group that one together and we'll move that to the side as well. And then the rest of this we'll delete. Get rid of that. All right, let's get our uh, jammers back up here. And the first thing I'm going to do with this design is I'm going to mirror it. I want to flip it down. And then I can kind of uh, get it sized up and everything because I'd like to bring this in, you know, under the uh, chambers here. And let's give it a little bit of a stretch. All right, let's get it centered up. Let's take uh, the chambers, choose it last, and um, go into my alignment tool and align side to side there. Get that centered up along there. Now my vectors here, a little bit, a uh, little bit messy. They're not that clean from that poor quality image and stuff. Well, let's see if. Um, Let's see if we can uh, clean that vector up a bit. See if we can clean that vector up a bit using our fit curves, uh, curve fit tool, which is fitting curves to, you know, selected vector. And so what I'd like to do is um, we're going to go with some circular arcs. And everything uh, I'll see what Bezier curve looks like in a moment uh, don't necessarily need to keep sharp corners um, I'm gonna use a tolerance of 0.02 and let's replace the vectors and not a whole lot of change this is before this is after some improvement on the curves you know so I will work with that that's good enough for me all right so we got one part of the design now on the C here I have a choice uh, do I outline the C with a box uh, give it a little bit of a flourish around the letter or do I do a flourish inside of the letter you know uh, you know what uh, what uh, could be you know what what could be done with it well let's 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 go ahead and let's do something so let's see what we've got for a pattern here something that we're gonna do it two ways See, I know there's another one hiding around here somewhere. There it is. <clears throat> Let me see here. I think that would probably look pretty cool if I did something like that within the side of the C or something. I don't necessarily need it to 
you know, cover the whole letter, you know, it's all about being creative and stuff. Uh, yeah, that could be interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and let's turn off our chambers here for a moment. Let's do a little bit of uh, bitmap tracing on this image. Turn our fading off. Get a little bit of a fill in here. Uh, turn the pixels up a little bit and preview. There we go. Close the bitmap layer. And so now I've got this pattern here and all. And if I turn my layer six back on and everything, now I can take my pattern and, you know, I, if I want to, you know, if I, uh, let's close our tool here. If I want to, you know, scale this up, you know, to change the, the dynamic of, you know, the pattern itself within the letter, if I want to scale it down, you know, um, I want to make sure that I get enough coverage and thing there. So just depending on what it is, you know, what we're going for, you know. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of meet it in the middle. I'll go just about like that there. And once again, with my letter C being my boundary, I'll select the pattern first. The letter C last, go into my trim tool. And one of the things I did not do is I forgot to offset my letter because I do want to offset it. Let's go ahead and offset it inward, just the letter first. Let's go ahead and offset it inward. When I'm offsetting, guys, I'm creating the boundary for the trim. Uh, and stuff. So um, I'm going to go with a little bit of distance this time. So I'm going to offset it inward by an eighth of an inch, deleting the original. Okay. And now I can go ahead and select my pattern, select my letter here. Trim, clearing outside of the boundary, kind of giving that letter some flourish. And then I want to bring this letter back out to its original state. I want to create that boundary around it again. Uh, so I'm going to go back outward that eighth of an inch, deleting the original. There we go. So we've got this nice little pattern in here. All right, let's see what uh, kind of monster we've created here. Let's go ahead and uh, there's no border or anything, uh, you know, we could do some decorative stuff around the border, but let's uh, uh, Let's just kind of see what we've got going on here just for the sign itself. I'm all about testing and experimenting with things and um, Let's go ahead and Calculate that now uh, James Stewart asks, why don't you leave original James? Do me a little bit uh, of a favor, bud. Uh, ask that question just a little bit clearly. Why don't I leave the original of what? Um, that way, I know what you mean. Uh, I'll leave the original of what? Uh, and all and, and everything. Kind of give me a little bit of instruction on that one, bud, so I can um, understand what it is. Uh, so let's preview what we created here. Uh, I might not like it this way. Uh, let's see what we've got going on and all let's kind of get up on here uh yeah that could be something <laughs> who knows uh let's take it a little bit of a different uh, approach let's go back in here and let's uh open up our v carve toolpath Let's select this here and this pattern and just do a V carve on that. Oh, when you make the outline, why don't I leave it the original? Uh, because um, I don't want, when the vectors get trimmed, when the vectors get trimmed, they get trimmed right up to the line. And I don't want, I can't have those overlaps. I can't have those overlaps uh, and stuff. So I offset it to create my trim boundary, you know, 
and then I bring it back, I offset it back outward to you know go back to my normal letter. And that creates that distance, that gap uh, between uh, my pattern and the border and all, rather than having overlap and, and, and causing issues with those lines overlapping and things. That's why I don't leave the original. All right, so let's, uh, let's reset this preview. And let's look and see what we've created if we do it this way. Let's preview the uh, visible toolpath here. And I have a flat depth on this uh, rather than just a straight V carve out um, and everything. And now let's get our uh, outline profile here. This is going to be a profile cut on the line with a 60 degree V bit. We'll calculate that out and preview that selected toolpath. Okay. So that could be option, you know, number two there for that uh, design, right? Okay. You know, uh, and uh, let's go ahead and let's switch some things up. Let's get rid of this guy here. Let's bring this guy in. Get it sized up a bit. Get that uh, centered up with the word chain hambers, hambers, right? Wouldn't it be hambers? Get that centered up. And once again, let's go into my curve fit tool. Uh, and um, I'm using a 0.02 tolerance. I'll replace the selected vectors. And if we. Oops. Um. A little bit better, got a little bit of a curvature there, but that's all right. Let's go into node editing. Let's take this guy here and let's get rid of, delete those, hit the letter D, delete those points right there. And let's bring this one up to this one. Hit the letter Y on the keyboard. Oops, I brought that one down. Sorry. I want to bring this one, select this last. Bring Hit the letter Y, bring that up. Put a little bit of an arc here. Get rid of these vectors, hit the letter D on the keyboard to delete those. Uh, it always leaves one behind, so delete that. Select this first, select this one last, hit the letter Y on the keyboard to bring that up. And then I'm just adding a little bit of an arc there. Kind of smooth that out. And then I want to take, get rid of this point up here. And I want to make sure that these, oops, get rid of this point as well. And I want to make sure that these points are in line with one another. There we go. Just a little bit of cleanup on that vector. Not that great of a vector, but now let's go ahead and get out of node editing mode and let's get rid of this design. If you didn't, so uh, if I didn't use the end mill, um, how long would it add? Well, quite a bit. So hold on one second, guys. Let me move this down here and. put this back let 
me center it back up. All right, the question is, if I did not use the end mill, how long would it add? Well, it all depends on if I'm doing a flat depth or not. So if I were to come in here and I were to um, V carve this design with no end mill, <coughs> no flat depth and everything uh, and all, then if I preview that tool path, this is cutting the word chambers and everything out to the full V carve. Okay. And then my profile cut So if we were to look at the time on this uh, you're looking at about 35 minutes okay about 35 minutes in that way but if I would have had if I would have kept the flat depth but no flat area clearance tool and I were to calculate that out and if we were to look at the time you're at an hour and 16 minutes so hour and 16 minutes now if I go back into there with that flat depth and add in the flat area clearance tool and I look at the time I brought that hour and 16 minutes down to 37 minutes so hopefully whoever asked that question um, Chuck hopefully that answers your question so flat depth with the uh, V bit only because it has to do all that flattening out with that little tiny bit hour and 16 minutes <coughs> flat depth uh, doing a tool change from the V bit to the end mill for the flat area clearances uh, knocks off about 30 40 minutes um, so from an hour and 16 minutes to 37 minutes and um, using the uh, doing it as a full V carve um, with no flat depth 60 degree V bit then we're looking at a time of 35 minutes either 36 or 35 okay all right and um, give me a moment okay and uh, Nicolau Costa good evening to you and uh, welcome from Brazil uh, good evening as well and everything from Florida Ocala Florida where I'm from uh, thank you for joining us Nikolai okay all right so let's go back to uh, changing up the design uh, hopefully um, Chuck hopefully that answered your question and all that Michael Parrish uh, the better cut and everything in my opinion uh, would be using the flat depth on this since versus the regular V carve uh, because of the size and everything uh, the flat letters with a an end mill for the flat area clearance tool uh, doing that two minute tool change to cut out 30 minutes but it all depends you know some people like that full V on those larger letters I love the full V no no flat depth and everything cut um, for uh, most uh, V carves and everything but I do not care for it uh, in larger letters and everything uh, where it would look better flat instead of so deep I don't want it so deep you know that it's a you know a pain and everything and uh, oops. let me get 
get that centered up. All right. Now, let's get rid of this flourish out of here. Uh, let's take uh, and let's change this about just a little bit. Let's bring this down just a little here. All right, let's take and mirror this. Uh, create a mirror copy, flip it about the job center, flip it vertically. Oh, and let's get chambers kind of centered up in here. Not a fan of that particular flourish, but hey, what the hell? We're just messing around tonight. Okay, uh, on this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's create a bit of a boundary here uh, with just square corners. Let's get the C brought down just a small amount, not much. And get it centered up inside of this rectangle. And let's make sure this rectangle is centered on the board go all right now i'm going to add a little bit of some flourish detail here maybe around the letters and all as well uh, so let's pa, 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 pa. let's do this let's take and offset this inward an eighth of an inch small amount Take and offset this inward. Uh, let's go outward. Always make sure I have sharp corners. Let's grab another design. Let's go in. Let's go into our arsenal of designs here and see what we've got. Such a small area to fill. Such a small area to fill. Let's take this pattern here. And let's see if we can do something with it. Gonna preview that. Shut down uh, the bitmap layer or click apply first. Close that tool. Turn off the bitmap layer. Uh, I'm gonna come in and ungroup this and then Let's let me see where I can go into the node editing and delete that span there, delete that span there. Delete that span as well as that one. Delete that span and then I can get out of node editing mode and just delete that all together. Take and go into node editing once again on this and um, just pull this out and a little bit and join that together with a straight line. Again, I'm not worried too much about um, just 
to line that with a straight line. I'm not too worried much, much about that or any of this miscellaneous stuff because a lot of this isn't going to even uh, play a role in my design. So it's all going to be gone. So I'm going to basically get this centered up. And on this one, this is because the flowers and everything are so small. This one I am going to scale up. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I am going to scale this up. And I'm going to, you know, scale it up in a way that, um, you know, I get the fill that I want and make sure that I, you know, move the pattern around uh, till I get kind of the fill that I want and everything, you know, whatever it may be. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, this is just one method here. All right, so with that, I'm going to group that together and um, let's go ahead and select my letter C and the boundary, group those two items together. So with the pattern, oops, I forgot to group the pattern. Let me make sure that pattern is grouped together. All right, with the pattern selected first, and then my C block uh, selected, we can go ahead and trim, uh, clearing outside of the boundary. Should give me that uh, pattern fill here and everything. And then once again, uh, on my letter C and everything, um, I can take my border and C. I'm going to ungroup it and one at a time, I'll turn off the letter C first. Uh, I'll go ahead and offset this back outward. I'll set this back outward, that eighth of an inch. Um, should have deleted the original there. we go. And then my letter C, I'll go back inward. Uh, deleting the original and everything to create and I'm creating that boundary that boundary you know that boundary around here and stuff all right so what I want to do with this is uh, I'm going to do a profile cut a V carve and then I'm gonna V carve the letter C with a flat depth as well so let's go ahead and uh, well let me show you what would happen if I selected the whole thing. And let's V carve that. Great that you guys are asking questions. We'll take a break and answer some of these questions after this. Uh, let's use a flat depth. I definitely want a flat depth on this. Uh, I definitely want to use a flat area clearance tool. Uh, I'll go an eighth of an inch flat area clearance tool and let's calculate this out. Now there's two open vectors uh, so let me see if I can find or locate those open vectors. So I want to ungroup this uh, and let's select all open vectors. Okay, let's ungroup this and let's ungroup these two items here. I want to ungroup everything because it won't show me any open vectors. Um, there's my two open vectors here, uh, most likely where I trimmed and stuff. So let's go into my join tool and it won't let me join because they are still open. And so therefore I have left a gap right here. I've left a gap right here. Uh, so I need to one at a time join this with a smooth curve, close that off. And same thing down here, join with a smooth curve, close that off. Okay, once again, let's go back into here and calculate that. Let's reset this and preview the visible toolpaths. Now this is just a, a V-carve toolpath uh, with a flat depth, a little bit of a flourish design and everything. Uh, around the letters and stuff you know uh, that's with everything you know selected and all so kind of the the letter C is kind of standing out and everything okay all right let's uh, let's change this to a black 
There we go. Um, let's change this up a bit. Let's, I'd like the letter C to carve away as well. So let's do this uh, this way. Let's do a vcarve toolpath on the pattern minus uh, the pattern in the letter C minus the border as well as here. And let's calculate that out. Okay, reset that preview. And then let's come in and grab our border here and do a profile cut. I'm gonna go 0.085 with a 60 degree V bit on the line. And now let's preview those visible tool paths. Let's turn off the color so we can take a look at this design um, and everything. So our end mill, our eighth inch end mill can only get into certain areas here as you can see uh, and everything and you can see some of the cleanup that it can't do so the V-bit has to clean up so you see the tool marks. Let's uh, recalculate Let's recalculate that tool path. And let's change the eighth inch end mill to my 16th inch end mill. Okay. And let's uh, preview the visible tool path. And let's see if we get any cleanup in our design and stuff off that color as soon as it's done carving so definitely with the 16th inch end mill I get some better cleanup areas and all in these smaller uh, parts of the letters and stuff uh, can really kind of you know take it home and uh, I don't know have some fun with it and everything uh, let's take a pause for a second let's uh, there's, there's a bunch of rolling questions in here so let's uh, Let's see what we've got going on here. Um, yeah, this design definitely would need a border to really make it kind of pop and stuff. And I'm not a big fan of this particular vector that's above and below chambers and everything. I'd probably want to do something different with that. Uh, let's see here. Um, just found your channel, loving the videos, learning a ton. Thank you, Dave uh, Skibo. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I pronounced your last name, Skibo, correctly. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, check your design on the bottom left. You accidentally deleted a vector. Yes, Ronald. Uh, that uh, And Jerry Williams pointed it out to me as well. I accidentally deleted a vector which uh, was below and above, above the A right there on those two flourishes. I deleted a vector. Um, uh, without reali even realizing that I did that. Thank you guys for pointing that out to me. I discovered that after it warned me and said, hey, there were open vectors and stuff. Um, so, uh, m yes, uh, Todd definitely does leave a bottom smoother with an end mill. Uh, I prefer that much better uh, than letting the V-bit do all that work, you know, that tiny bit. That just That's just a long run for no reason at all. And I always recommend, I'm a big advocate that every woodworker that has a CNC should at least have an eighth inch and a sixteenth inch end mill, as well as a quarter inch and, you know, the larger ones. But on the smaller side, an eighth and a sixteenth uh, for uh, these little detail cuts and things like this. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm a big advocate of having those in your arsenal of tools. Um, let's see here. Uh Mike Gallo says, any good brand, uh, any good end mill brand to cut MDF without burning the cutting tool? Um, well, Mike, uh, you definitely want a solid carbide bit. Uh, and, um, you know, you could get a, a bit that has a ZRN coating. 
uh, like an Amana uh, end mill, you know, that has a ZR encoding, uh, which helps uh, keep the bit cooler and extend the long, the running life of everything. <coughs> but if you're, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, if you're experiencing, <coughs> if you're experiencing burning and everything, then you need to look at your uh, feed rate and your RPMs of your bit, and you need to change them up and everything. Uh, you may also need to look at your pass depth and stuff of your cut and all. Uh, the burning and everything, the overheating, uh, your chip load isn't correct. Uh, your your with your M, especially with MDF, your your it sounds like you're making more fine dust than actual chips flying off that MDF. And chips, when those chips are flying away, that heat is flying away with them. It's expelling that heat away from the bit, keeping that tip running cool uh, and things. So we got to change the chip load, which means we got to change. Uh, you know, the combination of our uh, RPMs and our feed rate and everything. But um, I would, uh, uh, to add to that, you know, and a mana bit uh, is a good bit. Uh, ZR encoded bit uh, gives you a wide variety of materials you can cut with. And that coating helps extend the life of that bit, keep parts running cooler and stuff. And also, like I said, allows you to cut in a variety of materials with that one bit, you know, Aluminum, copper, brass, your non-ferrous metals, uh, you know, corians, plastics, and composites, along with your MDF and woods. So it's like a good bit. CRN coated uh, end mill from Amana Tools. Uh, let's see here. We've got. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Michael. Uh, best video on YouTube. Love it. Uh, let's see here. It's good uh, that you missed that vector uh, because I was struggling with fixing a similar problem. Yeah, Sylvia. So uh, I did. I when I was I must have done something that you guys caught where I deleted a vector. Um, Might have been during my trimming process. It could have been something, but I deleted a vector, and uh, it created an open vector. And so the uh, fix was to go back in there and locate those two open vectors uh, using the right click option selection select open vectors and then going and finding uh, where they're open and closing them up so uh, yeah I'm glad I did that as well too but I didn't even realize that I had deleted a vector Jerry Williams and another gentleman pointed it out to me uh, in the chat room uh, let's see here uh, Jerry is asking uh, wouldn't a small ball nose bit clean up better than an end mill well uh, Jerry, so let's take a look at that. So Jerry's posing a question, wouldn't a small ball nose bit uh, clean up better than an end mill? Not necessarily. I mean, it would and it could, but what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with a round profile from that ball nose at the bottom of my cuts and things um, and everything. And I don't necessarily want that. I want that nice chamfer V. I want that nice chamfer V down to a flat bottom. But let's take a look at it uh, anyway. With a, let's take a look at it with a ball nose uh, end mill. Let's use a. Uh, we'll you we'll do both. We'll do a sixteenth inch tapered ball nose and an eighth inch tapered ball nose. We'll look at them both ways. So let's do the eighth inch tapered ball nose first because it is the larger of the two. So let's uh, calculate this out. And everything and uh, we'll reset this and preview all the visible tool paths the uh, square end mill is gonna allow me to get to the bottom of my chamfer and everything um, and not have you know, it's going to allow me to get around to the bottom of my chamfer uh, of that V cut and everything. And let's turn off the color. And let's come in and take a look in here. Okay. Can you see, can you guys and girls, can you see this outline right here? This tool mark going here this is the tool mark left by the ball nose bit uh, because the radius cannot quite get into that corner up against that chamfer and everything because of the radius of the ball we don't have a flat edge to get up against that chamfer and all 
So we have this tool mark right around the edge here that um, you know is created by that ball nose bit. Let's go ahead and change it up to the 16th inch tapered ball nose instead of the eighth because we knew the eighth was going to be big to begin with. So let's open this back up and let's go with a smaller Look at there. Everything I just said was horseshit. Um, it did not let me use the tapered ball nose. It will not let me use the tapered ball nose. Uh, so that toolpath was not even calculated with the tapered ball nose. That tool mark is actually from the end mill. It's not from the ball nose. So one thing to answer your question is is we cannot use a ball nose in the v-carve toolpath for the flat area clearance tool it does have to be a flat end mill second thing is is we've got this tool mark here that i said was created by the radius of the bit and it couldn't quite get up against it that was actually created by the end mill so let's see what we can do to clean that up because a sixteenth of an inch end mill is actually going to be smaller the smallest bit that I can deal with. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Let's see what we can do to clean that up. So, Jerry, it won't let me use a uh, tapered ball nose bit. Everything I just said about that tool path, that, that tool mark that I was showing, that was not the tapered ball nose. Uh, that was pure horse cocky. It was the actual end mill because the, it did not even let me calculate the tapered ball nose and it was the actual end mill that left that. But was that tool mark uh, from the bit and from the quality of the cut or was it from the pixelation in the view? We're about to find out right now. So let's go in and let's, and I'm curious about the line right here that we were looking at earlier. So I'm not gonna change that view. Let's preview this visible toolpath. Once again, this is with a 16th inch end mill. And let's see if that pixelation, let's see if that pixelation was from my preview simulation quality or if it was from the actual end mill. Let's see if we have a tool mark and everything. All right. Go ahead and turn off the paint color. Still got a bit of a little tool mark there, but it's not, it's there, you know, it hasn't changed and everything. So as I zoom in, you can see. And is that going to, yeah, you can see it there, you know, as it's coming through. So, hmm. I do a little bit of cleanup. Not much. Not much. But overall, let's tilt this a little bit. Not a bad looking design in itself, uh, no matter if you use an eighth inch or a sixteenth inch end mill, but it will not let me use a ball nose bit, Jerry Williams. Okay, uh, let's go back up. Uh, Todd says, the harder the carbide, the better for MDF. There you go. Um, and everything. So, yep, quality of carbide, and carbide does have different, uh, uh, you know, um, hardnesses and things, and some tool manufacturers you know, use really good uh, carbide with the making their tools. Some of them use cheap carbide. You just gotta, you know, pick accordingly. Uh, I'm a big fan of white side and a man of till bits, uh, even Magnate, uh, Magnate.net. Uh, I like those three brands of bits and um, I, I kind of tend to, tend to stick with them because between uh, toolstoday.com, amanatool.com, uh, white side, 
uh, digitalwoodcarver.com and magnate.net. Between those places, uh, all, all of my bit needs are met um, and stuff. So, all right, let's see here. How do you do the rustic edge border that looks like broken boards with a V-bit? Not on topic, but that's a good question, Greg. We'll go ahead and uh, look at that. Um, let's see here. Really late start. Thanks, Jim, for joining us. Uh, won't the ball nose leave uh, grooves and lines? Peter, yeah, the, it won't let us use a ball nose at all, so we're just going to ignore the ball nose aspect of everything. Um, and uh, there we go. And just try a ball nose bit. Try just a ball nose bit. So if I try just a ball nose bit uh, without a V bit, I'm not going to get a chamfered cut. Um, if I calculate this out, reset the preview and preview this visible toolpath. This is a ball nose bit and an end mill combination. So I'm going to get a straight wall cut, little slight taper from the taper of the ball nose, tapered ball nose. But uh, I do not like these looks at all. I, I hate uh, pocketed cut letters. I hate pocketed cut designs. I think they look like shit, to be honest with you. Uh, I think a V-cut letter looks much better uh, than, you know, uh, than without. So I'm not a fan of what I'm about to see here. Yeah, not a fan at all. So, and that's a preference, guys. That's not saying that you always has to be a V-cut and everything, but I would never make a sign uh, using a pocket cut of letters, just a flat pocket cut. It would always have some kind of taper or chamfer to it some type of v-bit whether it's a small 22 degree 60 90 what have you uh, i would not do that let's turn the color off uh, so we can look at this design and what you'll see in here is you know we've got the letters and our design and stuff that has a round uh, radius at the bottom of the cut let's zoom in so we have this radius a slight taper on the wall from the tapered ball nose bit with a round radius at the cut and everything in that radius runs lower than the flat bit does because of the ball nose and yeah so that you know people may like that that might be your preference and all that but definitely not not one of mine <laughs> not one of mine I just uh, it's uh, yeah I would consider that a trash board so um, not a fan but again that's my preference. That's how I do my signs. Not you do your signs. You do you. Uh, that's just me. So let's go back to our V bit here uh, and get rid of that. You do not always have to take my word for anything. You don't have to do what I do. You do what you do. It's all about using your imagination, your creativity. I'm just trying to show you some various ways to think outside of the box and stuff. You know, if I don't have these decorative lettered fonts and stuff, um, you know, what can I do uh, to give my sign a little bit of uh, panache, pizzazz, some, I don't know. Um, you know a different look or what have you all right let's change this up a little bit let's go let's go completely mad here for a moment uh, let's go into our size of our board here and let's change this up and I'm gonna create a little bit of a bigger sign uh, more of a square sign that would hang on a wall like a piece of wall art um, and uh, the wall art let's go uh, it's gonna be a single-sided sign I want to go 18 is good, but on my height, uh, let's go damn, let's go 18 inches tall. <coughs> by 
16. And click OK. Not going to recalculate any of those tool paths because that's just a bunch of tool paths of a bunch of different samples and things. But let's go ahead and uh, let's 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 sort of mix this up a lot. Um, let's go to uh, let's go with the letter H. Go big. No, let's change it up. Let's change, forget the letter H. We've been doing H all night. Let's do letter B. Woo B. All right, let's go with the letter B there. Uh, let's get that centered up. <coughs> let's go ahead and stretch it a little bit. Stand tall, boy. Stand tall. There we go. And let's draw a rectangle right about here. I don't want to go too close to these letters and all here. Um, maybe about like that. Let's offset that inward. Here, let's get that centered up first. Uh, center that up on the board. And let's offset that inward by an eighth of an inch there we go and what's a good last name that starts with a B uh, uh, Bronson no what's a good last name that starts with a B <laughs> thanks Michael uh, uh, what the heck? Uh, what would be a good? Let's change uh, this to a one inch tall text and let's click in here. Actually, close that text tool altogether. We're going to use create text within a vector box here. We're going to use this inside boundary as our bounding box uh, and we'll mix it up a little bit. Let's do, let's change up the font. We've been using Rockwell Bold all night. Let's come in here and I don't necessarily want a I don't necessarily want a script font in this case. I just want a different font. Butterbean, Bennett, Bennett. There we go, a nice long letter. I was looking for a long one. We'll do Bennett. Uh, let's go B, uh, let's go all capital E, N, N, E, T, T. There we go. Sweet. Okay, Bennett, that almost fit perfect, right? No, I'm just kidding. It was the text box that made it fit perfect. Um, we're using no margins, you know, this is with margins. I'm doing no margins. So it stretches right out to that inside boundary and everything. Uh, what I want to do with Bennett here is I do want to take and I want to stretch it ever so much. Hold down the shift key so that we get a slight overlap above and below here. Uh, now, this particular font that I chose, we have some spacing issues. We have some spacing issues and stuff uh, with the N and the T and everything here. Uh, and it's just a matter of, it's not necessarily a spacing issue, it's a matter of just doing some joining. So let's convert that to a, convert that uh, a little bit there and um, 
I'm going to go in and group this together. Not group. Why, not, why am I grouping? Why am I grouping? I'm trimming. I want to trim. It's important that I make sure I don't miss those little vectors, the little guys up in here. They're part of the letters. So the Bennett, those two are gonna be combined together. We've got some spacing there, that's gonna be fine. Uh, what I can do with this is I'll bump, since I got a little bit of a gap there, hold down my control key and just micro bump this over, uh, creating some spacing between those two T's. And um, yeah. That's good. I can actually bump this one over just a little bit, hold down my control key, tumble that over a little, and my B and everything. Good. All right, now, okay. Now, what I wanna do is I want to uh, group uh, Bennett together here, um, not my letter B there, but I wanna group Bennett together and um, it's going to be the actual word Bennett this time is going to be my boundary. So, oh, hold on. Let me ungroup this. I got a little bit of a loop right here on the end. Let me clean that up. Let me ungroup and clean that up. There we go. All right, let me double check. Got one more down here. Got one more up here. And one more down there. All right, so that font had a little bit of cleanup I had to do. Okay, one more time. Uh, we're going to uh, grab the word Bennett, not the two boundaries, uh, just the word Bennett, and we're gonna group that together. All right, so Bennett's gonna be my boundary. And so uh, here, I'm gonna take my re inner rectangle here and I'm gonna hold down my shift key and grab Bennett last. I'm gonna grab Bennett last and I'm gonna use my trim tool once again and I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna trim clearing inside my boundary. Inside, remember the word Bennett is the boundary so I wanna clear away inside of the boundary. And when I do that, when I do that, what you'll notice is that the, okay, my trim letters, hold on, I gotta undo that. Undo, control Z, back up a little bit there, Johnson. Let me get back to my letters here. For this little trick to work I've got to have my spacing so bear with me let me get my spacing let's get this E moved over some get this N moved over some need that spacing need that spacing uh, let's get this moved over a bit let's get this T moved over this oops not down buddy let's go over this way just a hair Get this E moved over just a hair. There we go. Got to have that spacing. I could not combine those letters together uh, for this effect to work. So I could not combine them together or else it did not wrap properly around the letters. So once again, let's get this uh, Bennett group together. Uh, before we do that, let's trim. I got to remember I just did an undo. So that means I got to trim my ends again, my little loops there. All right, one last time. Select the letter Bennett, the word Bennett, not letter. The word Bennett is made of letters. Okay, group that together. All right, that's gonna be selected last. I want my inside bound or my boundary here selected first with the word Bennett selected last. I'm gonna use my trim tool and I'm gonna clear inside of that boundary. When I do, what you'll notice is that when we have now have a pink line going around the word Bennett and everything and therefore if I come in here and delete my text the actual text 
you will still see the word Bennett in there and everything. Now I just have a kind of a boxed vector of the word Bennett. Righto, righto. All right, now with that, we're gonna take and um, we're gonna take and we've trimmed around and it's taken that rectangle and it actually wrapped it around all of the letters creating the outline of the word Bennett. Then we actually deleted the actual text, get rid of the text. So we have, you know, just this vector here, you know, this guy here. I'm gonna group that together now. Now, here on the letter B, we have, um, you know, the letter B here, and we've got some vectors and everything that are kind of writing, you know, uh, through the word Bennett here. We're gonna clean that up as well. Um, basically, we're gonna have uh, the letter B selected first, hold down the shift key, select Bennett last, and we're gonna clear inside of the boundary. And what it should do is it should wrap the vector around the outside. All I care about is this vector here and this vector here. The other vectors that got basically kind of drawn around, it actually closed in some of these letters so you could actually see the word B, uh, you know, the letter B behind everything. But we're actually gonna, you know, delete those. I'm gonna clean those out, uh, you know, these vectors here and everything. You know, I wanna see the word Bennett. I don't wanna see any other vectors in there and stuff uh, and everything. And over here, the same thing. I had, uh, you know, go so now basically I have two separate vectors for the letter B uh, in the word Bennett kind of outlined and everything here now what I'd like to do is I'm gonna actually take this uh, word Bennett and I'm just gonna just ever so slightly ever so slightly I'm going to scale it down just a little bit a small amount to create a separation, to create a separation from those vectors, so I don't have an overlap in my lines and things. Okay, all right. So now we're here. Now I need to create my. I want to. I want to. I want a nice pattern inside my letter B. So let's go ahead and let's bring in another pattern. Let's see what we have to choose from. Uh, let's see here. Got a nice rose, floral rose pattern. Got a pretty cool uh, wave pattern here. Um, let's do the roses. Let's do the roses. Okay. Basically have a rose floral pattern. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's whatever pattern you want, but uh, let's go ahead and um, let's open up our trace bitmap tool. Let's zoom into that so we can see it, uh, turn off our fading and everything. And let's see what's going to give us the best representation. Kind of having this floral pattern. Now, once again, uh, I'm gonna size this pattern up. Now, I have a choice. I can size it up to where the floral, you know, where it's basically the size of my board uh, and everything. And, uh, you know, I can uh, fill it in that way to where I just have some general, uh, you know, just some design going through it, you know. I could make it smaller and and and, and um, I could, you know, kind of seam, you know, uh, seam two pieces together where I have a smaller design in there, uh, you know, depending on, you know, if I want to put another, another one here because it is a seamless pattern. I like working with seamless patterns and things. Um, in this case, 
I think I'm going to go seamless. Or with a seam, not seamless. But uh, let's take, let's move this off the side here. And I'm going to hold down my control key. Grab this right here, hold down my control key, and just snap it to here. Well, that didn't snap. Hold on a minute. Snap, there we go. And let's align these guys up. Uh, use my alignment tool and align side to side. There we go. And now I need to get rid of this seam. Now, currently right now, these uh, two lines are not truly overlapping. Uh, they're just kind of touching each other. And if I go to trim, it's gonna wanna delete you know, a lot of these vectors and all. So all I'm gonna do is just literally give myself a bit of an overlap. Um, it's not gonna be uh, so much in a way that uh, it's gonna take away from my design and stuff, but it's just gonna give it a bit of an overlap so I can actually come in here and you know trim these two so let's go ahead and ungroup this one and ungroup this one and I should be able to come in here now and clean up these overlaps let it catch up to itself No need to click, 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 click. This is what happens. You lose your pattern when you're clicking, clicking, clicking crazy and all. So I'm going to undo that. Okay. Uh, went a little heavy on the clicking and everything. Uh, but um, what we want to do is make sure that when we're trimming, you know, we're trimming cleaning up you know these overlaps and things or removing the overlaps however you want to look at that Ooh. and again uh, I'm not too concerned about the pattern itself or getting rid, you know, cleaning up the smoothing these curves and things on this seam. Uh, that is not uh, a concern for me at all. Um, on this one, I don't really have an overlap, so it's not trimming away. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete the span. <coughs> and I'm going to do the same thing here, delete that span as well. All right. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and get rid of that overlap. All right, so that takes care of the seam on this half. Nice little click, click, and uh, give it a chance to move on. I'm working with all those vectors and stuff. And it likes to jump in and out, but that's all right. I'm working nice and slow because, uh, you know, it's making my screen a little jumpy with this big old vector here. Only got two more to trim up. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and try to line everything up perfectly and all that stuff. It's, this is, this is, it's going to be small potatoes in the big picture, but you could, you could, you could, you could spend a little bit of extra time. You could literally move this over to this edge and everything here. I'm not doing that. Um, you know, I could, I could shift everything over, you know, just a little bit to make everything line up nice and pretty, but it's not necessary for what I'm wanting. We're 
working my way across almost done let it catch up to itself oh all right too many clicks I uh, need to control Z to back up one there we go being mindful that I keep an eye on something like that Zooming in nice and tight. I don't want to. I don't want to get ha halfway done with this image and then zoom out, and half of my flowers and everything are gone, uh, you know, and everything. So every once in a while, check on that. Don't just keep going down the line, you know. Come back in and check on those things. All right, here we go. Let's. Uh, we got a couple more cuts, and then we can move along. Move along. Move along, little doggy. And, you know, there's a lot, of, I, I think I have another pattern that would actually look a lot better than this flower pattern. It's all about experimentation and just seeing what looks good, you know, uh, have some variety, you know, go get some variety of different, uh, you know, seamless patterns and stuff. Uh, draw your own if you're, if you've got that artistic ability, uh, just go crazy with it and stuff. Um, and this will be the last one. There we go. I think this is the last one. Oh, no, two more. And that's it. Okay. So now with that uh, seam cut out, uh, we can go ahead and uh, right click and select all open vectors, no open vectors in the design. Yay us, right? And let's get this centered onto our board. And got a good little overlap on the letter all the way around. You know, if there's a particular uh, pattern that you like better than the other, you know, if you want a particular flower in a certain position or what have you, you know, move it around, mix it up, whatever you want to do. Uh, if I wanted to, I could rotate this pattern. I could rotate this pattern 90 degrees, even 45 degrees, right? I could rotate this pattern 90 degrees, and I could hold down my shift key and just stretch it up a bit, you know. Uh, and now I have this pattern kind of running lengthwise, and then now I have some variety that I could choose from, you know, on what, how many flowers, how many, let, whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever just does it for you. All right. So let's, I'm going to kind of go there. All right. So with that, uh, with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to select uh, this boundary and this boundary, the B inside and inside here, and we're gonna group those together. Gonna group that together. Back outward, that eighth of an inch. I'm not gonna get my B back here. You know what I mean? So I wanna keep my original intact. Um, you know, and I'm just gonna use that offset boundary for my trimming. So let's group that offset boundary together. All right, floral pattern. We're gonna use this inside offset grouped boundary here. Uh, we're gonna go into trim and we're gonna clear outside of that boundary and everything. So we get that pattern in there now. And now that I have that, I can grab my boundary here that I had my offset and I can delete it. I don't need it uh, and stuff. And uh, so I have my, you know, just my carvings and stuff. All right, let's go ahead and, um, I would like to carve Bennett out. Um, let's see here. If I pocket cut that, that's going to be the tease. I'd actually like that to be wood. Oh, which way do I want to do that? Um, 
Let me v-carve that. Let me see what it's going to look like v-carved. Uh, I'm not going to use any flat depth on that. I'm just going to calculate it out. Uh, there were seven duplicate vectors. I can get rid of those. All right, let me preview what this is going to look like first of all before I get... Okay, so I've got some trash right here that I need to clean up. Um, I've got some trash right there that I need to clean up. So uh, let's go ahead and here's my trash areas. And they're not necessarily trash areas. They're part of this V carve here, but I had them selected when I selected Bennett. So I got to be careful with my selection. All right, once again, let me go in and uh, select that and let's calculate that again. Seven duplicate vectors. I've got some duplicates in there. That's understandable. Uh, let's clean that up. <laughs> hey Dave, how you doing, buddy? Dave, you're a little late to the to the practice session, buddy. All right, so uh, we got the name Bennett here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's do some V carve. So if I V carve um, just the flowers, hold your shift key when you're selecting more than one here. If I v-carve just the floral design and stuff, um, let's take uh, this boundary here, let's offset it outward. I'm going to create a double line effect. Let's go outward and eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch is not wide enough. I'm going to go bold. So let's go a quarter of an inch, sharp corners. There we go. And let's V carve. Oh, hold on a minute. That's going to screw me up right there. All right. Bear with me. I want to trim alright I gotta do so I gotta do a little bit of ungrouping bear with me a second ungroup uh, that's ungrouped let's do a little bit of trimming alright what I'm doing is basically creating a new border here so this border goes all the way around the outside of Bennett and around the letter B. Probably not what I want to do, but let's give it a shot. And let's see what it looks like. Let's get rid of this line all the way across. I don't want that in my letters. Just getting rid of this straight line that I created. When I created that offset of uh, this outside boundary, it went, you know, it crossed over like you see here. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm cleaning that mess up. Uh, getting rid of that straight line all the way across. And I'm making the border go all the way around the letter B, kind of a double line border. Okay, what do we got here? This has got to go bye bye. All right, so I still can see the word Bennett all because I want to be able to select all of this. And if I did it right, ha ha ha, that's going to be the key. If I did it right, I should be able to do a V carve toolpath. No flat depth. 
I got two open vectors. Let me find those open vectors. Stand by. Right click. Select all open vectors. Right there. So that's a duplicate. So it needs to go away. That needs to go away. Right click, select all open vectors, no open vector design. Right click, select all duplicate vectors. There's my duplicates. I can go ahead and delete those as well. Don't need them in there. Once again, let's grab this and let's calculate. And if we did things correctly, okay, I'm going to need a flat depth. Let's see why. Okay, so I got those deep areas right there and everything. Definitely need a flat depth on this. So let's go back into there. And let's create that flat depth. However deep you want it to be, that's up to you. Uh, I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch for now. I will just use an eighth of an inch end mill. And let's see what we've done. Hey. All right, let's reset this preview back to a blank board. Let's preview the visible toolpath. All right, let's give it a different color here. Uh, I don't know, on a green, I don't know, black, no color at all, whatever you'd want it to be. Um, but uh, you know, kind of give you a little bit of a little bit of a decorative design, you know, um, to uh, play around with, have some fun with. Uh, if you wanted the uh, bees, uh, the inside of the bees, the letters of the middle of the bees to get carved away as well, uh, uh, then we could just very simply uh, reopen that toolpath. Deselect these two inside vectors here and calculate that again. Uh, preview that visible toolpath. Let's get back to a simple black, you know? Whether you want the bees in there or not, you know, the middle of the bees, you might want them a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit wider, whatever the case may be, just add those vectors back in there, however you'd want to do that. But, um, you know, you could even do here, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's offset this entire border. Let's offset this outward another uh, quarter of an inch creating sharp corners and let's take that border and these vectors here and let's do a profile toolpath. I'm going to do two things with my profile toolpath. Um, let's do a profile toolpath on the outside of the line cutting three quarters of an inch thick with a quarter inch end mill should be fine no stop the presses hold on a second guys here's what i'm gonna do i want to do first of all i want to do a v-bit uh i'm gonna do a 90 degree v-bit 90 degree v-bit uh cut depth is going to be 0.1875 uh, I want to be on the outside of the line with a point um, one eight step over. Let's go point one five step over. 
A negative. It needs to be a negative. Uh, let's see here. Sh corners. I want to go sharp corners inside and out. And this number here is going to be important for me. So I'm going to copy that number right there. That allowance for the cutout tool, my end mill. That's going to be important. I want to calculate that. Let's preview that uh, visible toolpath that we just created. Okay, uh, let's turn the material color off for a moment. All right, let's go ahead and do a profile toolpath now. Profile toolpath is going to be cutting all the way through the material uh, with the quarter inch end mill. on the outside of the line, but I need to throw in that value to calculate that toolpath and preview that visible toolpath. Unfortunately, my chamfer, my letter is too big on the side of the Bennett, so I'm not gonna get the chamfer on the left side and the right side of the Bennett. I probably wanna make my material just a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Probably want to make my material just a little bit bigger and all. Let's add a little bit of color. You know, the Bennett's, they like a little color in their life. Uh, let's go with kind of a, I don't know, whatever tickles your fancy. I'll just go with kind of a No, Mr. Bennett won't like that color. Let's see here. Sorry, Mrs. Bennett. You've been ruled out on that one. Uh, we'll go with like a teal or something. But give you an idea, guys, right? So give you some ideas and things you can do. Um, I would have made, I would make this a little bit bigger. Uh, make the board a little bit wider so that the chamfer would be on the outer edge of the Bennett as well. Uh, and stuff. Uh, but... Um, Hopefully, hopefully, these silly little things, uh, these little tips, these little, these little tutorials like this will give you some inspiration to take it further with your designs. You know, take it further. There's all kinds of patterns. If we look at some of my uh, uh, floral patterns that I collected uh, for this tutorial, um, you know, I've got a, a variety of uh, various patterns, these kind of wave looking patterns, um, different flowers. I've got different, uh, you know, swishes, um, which would look something like this when you double click on it. You know, I've got some different, uh, you know, just little cornucopias, whatever you want to call them, you know, that I might just want, you know, just one of these coming off of the letter and, and trim everything together instead of filling the letter with a with a boundary. Uh, you know, I've got some, you know, uh, multi patterns and things. So very simple vectors that we can use uh, to just kind of it doesn't have to be when we're working just with letters and all. Maybe I want to fill a design up with a pattern. Maybe I want to do, you know, an array of something. It doesn't even have to be a pattern that we find online or trace. It could be a pattern that we create ourselves. Um, and if you want to know more about arraying and working with patterns and stuff, check out my video that we did a couple weeks back. <coughs> the class video we did a couple weeks back talking about working with arrays. And then take those arrays that you create of those patterns that you create and then apply them to this where you have boundaries that you trim them to uh, and, uh, and, and outline and things. So you could do some really just cool stuff. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, with just some of the samples that you saw tonight, it was enough of a repeat, you know, all we did was create the pattern, create the vectors that, you know, and then trim 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 are we trimming are we clearing outside of that border or are we clearing inside of that border you know where do we want our pattern to fall and then from there you know we're working with offsets and stuff you know make it that way we get that gap see i like the offset because it gives us this nice wooden border 
around our edge and everything, you know, so our design isn't bleeding right into it and stuff. And our cut is, you know, spaced away from our design, so it's not cutting in, you know, I'm not getting V cut into those flowers and leaves and things and all. So um, hopefully um, you'll uh, enjoy this. Now what I'm going to do is of the three or four designs that we did create tonight, I am going to create a file with those in there. And I'm going to take some of the... Uh, most all the patterns that I've got and I'm going to create DXFs for them and there's going to be a layer in here called patterns patterns and all of those different patterns will be inside of that I have pattern I might do like pattern one pattern two pattern three pattern four pattern five you know but I'll make sure that those are included in the files and stuff um, that way you have some patterns to play with uh, remember, if you bring up, you have you, these are seamless type patterns. So if you trace one and you make a copy of it and you put them next to each other, give them a little bit of an overlap and then do some trimming. You know, get, make it seamless. You know, uh, and everything so that way you don't get a line down your design and stuff like that. But um, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll create those vectors and all, and I will make that a digital download in the description of the video uh, and for you digital woodcarver owners group. Uh, guys and girls, um, I can post the files in the in the owners group for y'all, but I will make it a download link in the video, uh, and you'll probably see that available if you pop back over, you know, tomorrow or maybe later this evening. I'll go through and do that and stuff uh, and everything. But uh, and um, I'll give you a, I'll give you quite a few variety of backgrounds and patterns that you can mix and match and stuff. And everything so that'll give you a start at least it'll give you a head start all right ladies and gentlemen uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up uh, with questions it's 947 um, any questions any uh, questions on any of this stuff uh, that you need answered um, before we close out so let's go ahead and uh, let's end with some questions and let me move over to my front scene here I'm trying to grow a beard that's if you're wondering why I look so raggedy and shaggy and all that stuff I'm trying to grow a beard I haven't done any trimming or cleaning up and everything I'm letting it kind of do what it does uh, and I, I just, I'm just curious to see how much gray is in my beard so I'm <laughs> that's why I look a little rough tonight all right so we'll give it a few minutes if you have any questions type them out now uh, and if not, uh, y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and, um, you know, I appreciate everything. But let's let's give it just a few minutes, see if you have any questions. Because I know there is a delay from when I'm talking to when you're typing and stuff. There is a bit of a delay. So, we'll... Um, hmm. Oh, awesome, William. Glad uh, that gave you an idea for a, a, a possible project and stuff. I hope to see some projects come out with all that. You've seen those projects on Google. You know, those VCARF signs where they have really decorative letters and all. Now, I'm just filling in the letters and all. But, uh, you know, if we... Um, remember, you don't have to necessarily do that and everything as well. If we come in here and turn these patterns off and I go back to... What pattern was that? Here, you know, even if it's just a matter of adding a nice little flourish, a nice little vine, a nice little bit of detail to the word or the design or whatever it is, you know, it's not always necessarily filling in uh, the letter. It's just a matter of, you know, adding a little swirl here. And what I did is I've got a box, you know, around here and I, I trimmed up, you know, where that box was overlapping the vine. The vine. And where the vine goes into the letter, uh, I have the letter kind of wrapping around that vine and everything, you know, to create kind of that little floral pattern and stuff. So think about that too when you're working with everything, you know. Um, it's not necessarily about just filling the letter or filling the, the box. Add a little bit of a, a little swirl, a little swish, a little, 
a little nice little vine or a little floral or something, you know, flourish to it uh, and, um, you know, have some fun with that and all. So, all right, let's see what we've got here. Um, don't be scared. It's just a beard, right, Tim? Uh, great class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, will a 90-degree V-bit on this type of file as well, will it, will it work? Absolutely. Uh, so um, I use a 60-degree, uh, but it, absolutely, if we came in here and um, if I change this up to a 90-degree V-bit, because I'm using a 90 for the chamfer on the outside edge already, but if I use a 90 degree V bit on this and we calculate this out, um, oh, that was the welcome sign. Why did I do the welcome sign? That was silly. Hold on a minute. I recalculated the wrong toolpath. Like a goofball. Should have been number 12. Uh, 60, change that to a 90 degree V bit. Calculate. All right, when we, when we use a 90 degree V bit, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this preview back to a blank board. Uh, using a 90 degree V bit, all that's gonna do is give me a little bit uh, wider angle on the, uh, the flowers and everything. Um, and probably not going to be as noticeable with an eighth of an inch cut, but would definitely be noticeable with maybe like a 0.15 or a 0.25 inch depth cut. I like shallow cuts and everything, but yeah, you can see more of a defined edge. You see that, um, more of a defined edge and everything on those letters. You can really see that edge now, that 90 degree angle and stuff, um, and everything. Uh, let's... Let's take and uh, do the profile chamfer and the profile cut preview visible tool pass. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Kevin. Hold on a second, guys. None of you are seeing what I'm seeing. I'm sitting there just, you're just watching me talk to you. Um, all right, changing it up to a 90 degree V bit. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I got a, I got an actual preview screen over to my left and I didn't even notice it. Um, all right. So changing the V carve tool path to a 90 degree V bit instead of a 60, uh, what it's done is, um, on my, uh, design here that angle that chamfer on the design and everything uh, is more pronounced you can actually see it more pronounced uh, than with a 60 and everything um, as far as uh, you know if I add you know the preview in here and give it some color and everything as far as the design itself you know pretty much looks the same you know uh, we we'll go back to that kind of uh, teal blue color you just got more definition on that angle but a 90 degree would work as well it does not have to be a 60 it does not have to be a 60 okie dokie okie dokie all right sorry about that I'm gonna stay on the screen here and just in case somebody else has a question here um, I got a lot of good ideas from it thanks Michael Parrish hopefully you use some of those ideas and uh, have some fun with it you know create some cool looking things some nice wall art or something. Um, uh, David, I think you were too busy to shave. No, I'm actually just, I'm literally curious. Uh, um, my girlfriend's curious too, but uh, I want to grow out a beard and just see what it looks like. I've never really let it fully grow out. I've always shaved, but we're going to we're gonna see what it looks like and just see how much gray is in there. I got a lot of salt and pepper. I might have to use a little just for men to kind of color it in. <laughs> All right. All right, well, listen, great, uh, great questions and everything. Um, I appreciate that. Hopefully that answered your questions and stuff. All right, guys, it's 9.54. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up and call it an evening. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for hanging out with me tonight and uh, really uh, 
I really, really hope that this wasn't too boring of a class that you were able to pick up some tips and stuff, maybe get them wheels of spinning for something completely different. You know, it's like, okay, you know, let's, let's mix it up a little bit now and everything and uh, just have some fun in patterns. Patterns, whether you create those patterns uh, or yourself or you, you know, you trace them from an image or whatever the case may be, have some fun with those patterns. Uh, I love working with patterns. And uh, again, a couple weeks back, I did a class on working with arrays. Uh, creating pattern arrays and things and stuff and uh, that can show you about creating patterns and things uh, that way as well and you can have some really cool times with that all right everybody um. oh David says uh, so you added color with the tool uh, but how would you do it live uh, well what I would do uh, is um, I would cover my entire blank board uh, with some Aura Mask 813, Aura Mask 813. Uh, I would do a, um, my V-Carve uh, cut. Normally I would do a pocket cut first, but I would actually do a either a V-carve cut um, uh, Which is outlining all of those areas and everything so I can pick away the large areas of uh, Aura mask that are gonna get spray painted and all where my pocket cuts gonna be um, But cover the whole board with the Aura mask 813 I would then um Come in and run my VBit, which when we preview the visible toolpath, would basically carve kind of the outline and everything. I have no idea what that is on the top of the V, but we'll, uh, let me see if I have another toolpath check and we'll get rid of that in a minute. Um, but uh, now all of these heavy areas here, these heavy areas that are going to get pocketed out in my letters and all, I would peel off that aura mask. I would peel off that aura mask. Let's turn off the color. Um, you know, I'd peel off that aura mask and everything. And uh, then I would run my pocket cut. And my pocket cut would do all those flat areas and stuff. Now when that pocket cut was done and all, my aura mask that was not peeled off is still covering all of this, protecting my board and all. Now I can spray paint. And uh, when I spray paint, that will add the color in. And when I peel off the aura mask, Let's imagine, let's, let's, let's kind of, we'll, uh, we'll play along. That aura mask is kind of a dark blue. So let's say I have my aura mask in there. I spray paint. Let's say I spray paint my uh, sign red, right? You know, I got that spray paint and everything. Uh, and then I go in and peel off the aura mask. And um, when I peel off the aura mask and everything, you know, I'm back to my natural wood color. And the only places that are painted are the carved areas. I have no idea what that. Um, let's turn this layer back on. Turn this layer back on. Um, turn this layer off and that layer off. I don't know what that B carving up there is. But anyway, uh, it won't be in there when you carve it. But that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. Um, I would, uh, oh shoot, hold on, I'm not sharing the screen again. Dadgummit, Greg, thank you for pointing it out. See, I thought I was gonna, thought we ended. All right, let's do that again. Let's do that simulation one more time. Reset the preview. All right, so real quick, I would cover my uh, board with Aura Mask 813. It's kind of got this bluish color to it. You know, I've got a purple on here, but let's say. 
Uh, I would run that V carve tool path. I'd run that V carve tool path. The V part first versus the pocket. I'd run the V carve tool path first um, versus the pocket and everything. Now on this particular tool path, I've got this little swoop coming up on my uh, B. Ignore this swoop up here. I don't know what it is. We'll have to figure it out in a moment. Um, so now I could come in and inside my letter B here, everywhere that's going to get pocketed away, I'm going to go ahead and peel off that aura mask. So all these big areas here that are going to get pocketed away, you know, around my um, B and stuff, that's going to get pocketed away. I'm going to peel that off. And then I'm going to run my pocket cut. My pocket cut is, you know, these areas here that you see in the, here, let's change the color. Imagine if this was gray. My aura mask is going to be gray. Um, so now all these areas here, I've peeled off that aura mask and now I'm running that pocket cut. So I change bits. I run the pocket cut and everything. It's going to go through and cut everything out. Okay. So... Uh, let's give this a little bit of a wood color, kind of make it look realistic, whatever. You know, so I got it all cut out and everything. So now I'm going to spray paint the entire board, whatever color it is that I'm going to paint it. And then I would peel off all of my aura mask once the paint dries. I'd peel off the aura mask and be back to my natural, you know, the only places that are painted are what's, you know, what was carved. That's how I would do it. So now it's going to drive me nuts. I got to come in here to my V carve tool path and figure out what vector is turned on. I don't see any. Let's calculate that. Oh, hold on a minute. There's a layer that should not be on. Yeah, should be just those two. Okay. Okay. I've got this line shooting up here. Uh, if you can see, I've got this toolpath shooting up here from one side to the other, and that bad boy mm -hmm. is Strange. Strange. Give me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. You can drive me insane. Okay. All right. Mo better. Mo better blues. All right. Anyway. All right, everybody. I uh, was just trying to figure out why my line, I had that funky little toolpath whoosh up there and everything and stuff. But hopefully you enjoyed that class. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, hopefully that answers your question about how I would paint it, uh, David Kinsey. Um, I cover, you know, my project with an aura mask. Um, 
I go through and uh, you know I paint it um, and uh, but I do the V car first so that cuts out it cuts a nice little clean outline around everything uh, then I would do the pocket cut last and normally I do the pocket cut first normally I do the pocket cut first and um, that uh, you know that makes it a little bit different for me okay all right I do the V car first that way I can peel off the ore mask where my pocket cuts gonna be you know in these large areas and things and all and um, uh, that way I you know I got something going on happening with my vector up here I'm not even gonna ar uh, argue with it anymore uh, I got a little swoop the swoop going on so um, what the hell is doing that there's something odd All right, we're going to fix this, and then I'm going to call it a day. Um, go ahead and note editing. I'm going to delete this span here. Delete this span. I'm going to use my extend tool. Click here. Tool, what did you use my line tool? Use my extend tool. Join that back together. Come in here and select this, turn off this vector here. Turn off select all that turn this vector off there turn these guys off here and here calculate let's see if it's carving between there leaving that carving between there Calculate this toolpath. There we go. That should clean up that mess. I don't know what it was that was causing that um, to jump over, but just had to delete those two spans and just redraw them. There was some kind of issue, and that's how we get around that. All right, this is with a 90 degree V bit that someone asked about. There we go. All right, everybody. So we just had to go through and fix that up. Uh, we should now be able to come in here and run our two tool pass to cut that out. Chamfer it and cut it all up. Get rid of our excess. And yeah, the board would be a little bit wider so our chamfer would be on the side of Bennett and everything. But uh, all in all, there we go. All right, everybody. I wanna thank you very much. Uh, have a great night. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. And um, there will not be a class uh, next week. Um, let me make sure that's the right dates. Bear with me a second here. <clears throat> next week correct uh, no that's incorrect there will be a class next week the 29th on Monday 
but there will not be a class the following week on the 5th. Uh, there will not be a class the following week. So, yes, there will be a class next week uh, on the 29th. All right. All right, everybody. Until next time, y'all have a great night. Thanks. Bye now. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.